time for our panel discussion. We're going to talk some AI. Well, let's welcome in Mark Beckew, uh, AI Research Director at the Futurum Group, and David Trainer, CEO of New Constructs. Um, you know, but let's uh, let's get into a discussion. Mark, I'll, I'll go to you first because New York Times filing suit against ChatGPT uh, in December. Here, there's probably going to be a lot of, of regulatory issues moving forward in this space. Uh, you know, as uh, this continues to get built out, right? So this isn't surprising on that front. No, it's not at all, Tom. It's uh, it was it, it's there's precedent to this. You know, it's this classic uh, copyright issues kind of protection of content. And I think that uh, the New York Times has a lot to lose, and they won't back down from this without getting some sort of resolution. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, if you take a look at this, David, you know, the use of AI, it's supposed to affect everything from tech to industrial, uh, you know, everything, farming. <laughs> you know, what space is our, you know, you're looking at moving forward with AI that it's going to benefit the most and maybe opportunities in this space uh, in, uh, according to new constructs where you, you're going to see this impact immediately and then maybe others down the road? That's a great question, Tom, because I think we're so early in the game that no one's really able to do a good job of discerning between good AI and bad AI, right? There are firms out there that have just started like Patronus AI that, that has this uh, special tool that does nothing but try to help you figure out where AI is working and not working. And I think the regulators are going to struggle with the same thing. And the easiest place for AI to work is where it gets the most training data, which is why we've seen this chat GPT stuff out there, which is able to use all of the free information on the internet is training data. That's a lot. Unfortunately, that's really just a lot of um, misinformation. There's a lot of news that's good and not so good. And the AI has a hard time distinguishing. It also has a hard time knowing what not to plagiarize, right? Which is where the New York Times comes in. But the one place where I think AI can make the most difference, in many ways, where perhaps the world needs it the, needs it the most, is in analyzing financial documents, right? We don't have a good sense of how to measure profitability consistently across all companies. There's no one version of the truth, right? There's there's Wall Street earnings, there's gap earnings, there's pro forma earnings. And I think an AI technology that would go in and, and crawl all of these 10Ks and 10Qs and put together systematically statistical measures that allow people to have a real measure of profits and valuation would be extremely helpful to the capital markets. Uh, yeah, definitely, and I'll, I'll expand on that in a little bit. But Mark, going back to you, you know, Microsoft and some others are already starting to monetize AI at this point. Uh, is this a, you know, a, a broad-based kind of expectation that you're seeing with AI is that all these companies are going to benefit in some way, but there's definitely going to be winners and losers because that pull from AI has pulled up companies that still aren't making money. So is this a, a weed out process? We've been through things like this, whether it's the streaming side, whether it was the internet in the late 90s, early 2000s, we've been through these cycles. Is this different this time? I don't think so, uh, Tom. What we're seeing, if you really track this market, is the people who have monetized AI so far are AI veterans. Uh, Microsoft has been invested in AI for over 10 years. They're, they lead the world in patents for writing on, on AI. It's a, the research is out of the world. Um, and and they, had, they were at a place where they could leverage generative AI. So generative AI really put us in this motion, if you think about it. But these companies that already had been working with AI, they understood uh, the life cycle. They understand the risks. They understand, you know, the rails you put around these things. They were the ones, and I'll name this Microsoft, Adobe, Salesforce, uh, all of these companies, AWS and Google are, are the ones that are starting to monetize AI um, for different reasons. So if you think of it as for, for Microsoft, they had this perfect setup of an application that everybody uses that they can infuse with AI through Copilot and all of the um, 365 applications. So they're in a good place to monetize it that way. Um, Adobe is another one with Firefly. It's a really well thought out product mm -hmm. that's infused with AI that lets people do something uh, better and easier. So we're just at the beginning of that if you think about it. Um, and I don't think that's gonna be, you know, what we'll see going forward is companies like David said, they've gotta figure out what they're gonna do with it, how they're gonna make them do something better. 
Definitely. Uh, it's been around for decades, David, uh, you know, uh, uh, according to Mark there. But when you look at this and, and the ways that you guys at New Constructs use it, how is this benefiting uh, you and your clients? I think as the technology gets better, you know, you just got better tools. Mm -hmm. But to Mark's point, at the end of the day, it's really all about the data and the quality of training data you can give the AI. You know, it's it's not diff any different from the from, you know, before AI, we just called them models. And the old saying about models was garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. And so it's the, really the companies that have the best training data are going to be the ones that make can make the most of the large language models. Those models themselves are not necessarily that much of, of that much unique value. At the end of the day, it's the quality of the inputs. It's the detailed and 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 accuracy of the training data that's going to distinguish one AI model from another. Yeah, and definitely the, the potential regulation coming down uh, the pipeline on a lot of this as uh, there's some intellectual property uh, concerns moving forward. All right, great discussion here. Appreciate it, guys. That's Mark Beck, the Futurum Group, and David Trainer, New Constructs.